Hi, I want to welcome you to our new video on watercolor and white crayon resist painting. It's a very fun technique that I've been playing with and I wanted to share with all of you. I have um, the supplies out and I want to go through those first. I also want to mention that the instructions are on our website, HanoverTownship.org, where it's a downloadable PDF and you can um, see all the supplies you need and then all the directions. It's pretty easy to follow along and I'm going to go through that technique with you here. But first I wanted to show you some examples. Um, watercolor is actually pretty fun and easy to use when you start with simple techniques and that's what this video will show you. And what I've done is um, use some 5 by 7 inch pieces of watercolor paper and created some very pretty little um, paintings that are done with the wax, white wax crayon to create what's called a resist. That means the watercolor won't stick to it. And I've been playing around with colors and designs and um, just playing around. So this is what we're going to create and um, I think you can handle it because it's um, very simple, very fun and um, once you get started it's kind of um, kind of takes on a life of its own and then you just want to keep creating more and more. So the list of supplies are um, watercolor paper and this paper is a 140 pound cold press watercolor. It's by Blick Studio and Fabrino and it comes in pretty big sheets and I take them and cut them in five inch by seven inch pieces and um, they work out really well but I also found another alternative that is really easy to come by. It's this XL watercolor paper by Canson. And it is um, a little bit smaller, but it's a nice texture. It's a little bit um, lighter in weight, but it is 140 pound. And um, I've had a lot of success with this paper. I like it a lot. Um, you will also need a couple paper towels. And I like the select a size, and I take and fold them in half and then half again. And I work with this size. Um, so I can blot my water and my brushes out and my colors and make sure I'm not too saturated. Um, of course, you'll need the papers. And then you'll need a piece of cardboard to take your piece on um, like this. So it gives you some a little bit of stability. You'll need some um, copy paper so you can do some sketches and ideas. So I sketched out the 5 by 7 inch design size here so I know that this is what I'm going to work with and my design needs to fit inside of here. So um, you'll need a ruler so that you can make the lines on your copy paper and a pen or pencil. Um, brushes. I have used um, round brushes. I've got a number six and a number two. I'm calling the number six my big brush and the number two my small brush. You'll need two crayons, one in white, of course, for the white resist, and then one of another color, your choice, doesn't matter. This is for creating your design. Um, I also found a nice um, pencil sharpener. It's got a big opening and um, it allows me to sharpen to get a nice point so I don't have this big thick point um, when I'm drawing out my design. I have something that is a, a little bit smaller, more manageable. Then I have a piece of scrap watercolor paper for testing out my colors. Some tape, and I really like this blue painter's tape when I'm working with watercolors. It tapes down the piece onto my, my backer board and I can get a nice seal but it doesn't stick and pull the paper away once I've done and want to take it off of the board. Um, you'll need some q-tips. I'll explain those a little bit later. And then the watercolors. The watercolors come in two different um, formats. Um, cake, which means it comes in a tray and similar to this, this is a little travel piece, a uh, little travel set that I found. And um, these are called cakes because they're dried and stuck into a, a base or a palette and then you get these wet and when they're wet then you can use them or they come in tubes and I've squeezed them out onto this little palette which is nice I use this for my quick and easy watercolor classes and then if you have a big tray then you can also do this. Now this is mine that I use for, for classes here at Hanover Township and um, I've used it a lot and I just kind of leave it messy because that's just the way I work. You'll also need a water container for water and some good light. So let's get started.
I wanted to mention that I have put together a few of these art kits that are available, um, and it's a first come, first serve um, basis. So if you do not have any supplies, I have about three of these left. They have all the things you need in it, um, except for the water and the water container and your paper towels, but a set of watercolors, some um, watercolor paper already cut out, a backer board, and the instructions. You'll need to use a little bit of um, copy paper as well. And these are available. Pick up, just give me a call here at the um, Hanover Township Senior Center and I'll put them on reserve and you can do the drive-by pickup if you like. And um, of course there's like two or three of these left. So if you need one, let me know right away and I'll put your name on it and you can buy and pick it up. So this is nice to get started if you don't have any supplies at home. But I wanted to show you step by step on how to create one of these watercolor and white crayon resist. So I used the copy paper and I made out some samples sizes. This is five by seven inches. And I'm going to go and use crayon, um, another sort of crayon, and start drawing out designs. And I've already done that. And the reason I'm using a colored crayon to do this is because the lines will be the same when you're using the white crayon. Um, if you were to do pencil and you did some really fine details, it wouldn't translate well between the pencil to this white crayon. So anyway, I played around with a couple designs. I thought about nature, some flowers and things, and then I thought about um, some geometrical. This was just a couple of different glasses and things I had laying around. I played with triangles, but I really found these pleasing and um, I really liked this leaf pattern. So what I did is on another piece of paper, on my watercolor paper, I put the paper right next to my design and then I traced it out. And I know it's a little hard for you to see because it's white on white, but um, having this size paper and crayon translating into the same size paper with the white crayon will assist you in drawing it. And then in order to see it, I don't know if you can tell, but if you tilt the paper in a bright sunlight or a bright spotlight, you can see the design is already transferred onto the paper. So that way you can see, if you look at it from an angle, it's, it's easier to see. But don't worry about too much about accuracy. This is mostly about playing around and having fun. So I took this design, I've transferred it onto this paper, and then I took my backer board and taped it down with the blue Pantress tape that I liked. And I make sure that I've got about an eighth or a quarter inch border all the way around, and I just rub it down so that it really connects and seals it on well, like that. And then I am ready to paint. So the one thing about watercolors is they dry when you first start using them, so you need to get them wet. If you have a spritzer bottle for a spray bottle, that's nice to have, but if you don't, I just use my large brush and then put a little bit of water in each little tray, part of the tray, and let them sit for a bit. And I'm not rubbing them right now, I'm just getting them wet. Um, I want them to soften up so I can use them. So I have a simple palette here of yellow, orange, red, a blue, green, and Payne's gray. And those are just basic colors, but these are some of my favorite colors to use when I'm creating. I, I want to make sure that they're ready. It just takes a minute or two um, for them to soak in. And I want to make sure I've got enough to get started with. So I'm going to be using greens, blues, um, probably the yellow a little bit because this is a leaf design. And while that's soaking, then I'm also going to take my large brush and I'm going to get this whole sheet of paper wet. And I don't want it puddling, but I want to make sure that it's saturated enough so that it isn't shiny when the water soaks in, but it has a nice satin kind of finish to it. And I'm just slowly working across and getting it wet. And the way I can tell, again, is to look at it at an angle. And, and I hope you can see it there. Part of it's wet, some of it's not. If it looks really glossy, it still hasn't soaked in enough. So I wait till it has the sheen or the glossy shine it has kind of dissipated. And it doesn't take long, and it doesn't take a lot of water. I'm gonna go over it a couple of times just to make sure it's all evenly wet 
and I'm ready to go. It's still a little glossy, but it's almost there. So while I'm waiting for this to finish soaking in, I'm gonna come over here and start mixing up my colors. And I know I want green, it's leaves and such. So I'm just, see it's softened up quite a bit. So I use this area of my palette for mixing colors. This is for keeping the colors pure without any other colors added to it. And this area here is for mixing. So I'm just gonna bring, soak the brush in there and pick up the color and transfer it to here. So I wanna play around with this color in a couple of different combinations. So I'm gonna make three spots. There's one, two, three. Now I put them next to the colors I wanna mix in so that it's really easy. So I wanna make this a little bit of a lighter green. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip into the yellows. I don't have a lot. And mixing a little bit in at a time is better than mixing up a whole bunch. And there we go, that's a kind of nice yellowy green. And it's different from this one. And if you wanna try the colors, that's what this little piece of paper is for. So I can just try it out and see how I like it. And I think I actually wanna add a little more yellow. And I'm happy with that, that's not bad. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. A lot of times I will wipe it off on my paper toweling first and then um, wash it in the water to, just to keep the water clear and clean. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue so I have a darker version of this green. And I don't need a lot all at once, especially since this is a smaller painting. Here, let's see how that looks together. It's nice, I like that. And that goes good with the original green too, because it's all the same. It's all from the same mix, or the same base color, I should say. So there we go, so now it's time to play. Because my paper is well soaked in now, and I am just gonna start playing with colors. Because this is a, um, a loose painting, I'm gonna be loose with my, my colors too. And I'm just going to start adding in. And you can see where the white crayon resist is. It starts to soak in around it, but where the white crayon is, the paint won't absorb inside the paper there. I'm going to just play around, put in with colors. Here's with the yellow mix. And I'm going to use it up when it starts getting sketchy and dry looking like here. Then I know I know to, to reload my brush. So I'm going to rinse it out a little bit. A lot of times I will work with a dirty brush, which is not rinsing it out and going into the next color. It gives you some interesting combinations. And then I can blend into the wet of the previous color to get some more blending colors. And it goes both ways. Now I see I have a little hair on here, so I'm going to leave it. It's best to just leave it. If I can pick it up with the brush, I will. But if it won't come up, like it's not now, I'll let it dry and then I can just simply brush it off. Back into my original green, my base color and just play around. Now, paints tend to dry a shade or two lighter once they dry, so you will want to um, either make a little bit darker than you expect it to be, or go back and add some more. So I'm just gonna play around with color. Put some of that yellowish mix here. I'm working pretty quickly. And you wanna work while it's still quite damp, but not soaking wet. You can see it's starting to buckle just a little bit. Bumping up a little bit there. And some more of the dark. So 
So I can now go in and add more color. So I'm going to add just a touch of blue to my green blue mix and make it just a little bit different and put some blood and some color in there. Maybe you want to do some background around the leaves, which is like negative painting. To make it a little bit darker here and there. I'm going to grab some more of that basic green, making it just a little bit thicker color paint. Do the same kind of thing. Now it may go into the leaves, but that's not a concern. I think it's just more about playing with the resist and adding color here and there. Now if you want to add different colors outside of this color family, you can do that too. So if you wanted to add an orange or purple in here, that would be pretty too. Um, I think I would let it dry, or if you need to, you can blow it dry with an air dryer. Always use a low heat and a low fan setting when you're using hair dryer on your artwork. It, um, otherwise it might bake if you get it too hot. I'm just adding a little bit of highlight, some of this yellow green onto the leaves, and just playing around. Having fun. Getting creative. It's good to be creative. Um, if you are stuck inside a lot, like we are lately, um, getting busy and doing some artwork is really good for you. And I talked about that in my art talk recently. And um, I know that I always feel better after I get a little painting done and get a little creative. See, I'm building up layers and layers of translucent color, little bits at a time, cross-blending them from one to the other. I want a little bit darker up here. It's that uh, simple. You can add, keep adding layers and layers as much as you want. Until you are satisfied. Pretty nice, huh? So I'm going to let that dry. And if you'll notice, along some of these white lines, the color is sticking. And I have a way of minimizing those. And I'll show you on one of the other pieces I did. So I'm going to let this dry. I'll go back to it later and maybe add some more. So on this piece here, I did the colors, some rows to a violet, to a cerulean blue, and I'm going to use a Q-tip, and I just get it damp, and I'm drying off the excess, and I'm going to go over these white lines, and I'm not rubbing very hard, but I'm picking up the extra paint that's on top of that. So this is what shows the white background, the white crayon, and you can pick up the color and remove that to clean up all these lines. And when it gets dirty, you just use the other end. So I would probably use about four or five Q-tips on this piece, maybe more. But I keep turning my Q-tip to get a clean spot so I'm not blending the colors. But some of the blending might be kind of nice too. It's whatever you want to play with. So here I'm just cleaning it up. Simple as that. So there, I would go through and do that to all of them. And I have quite a stash of the Q-tips, so I don't worry about trying to make them. I, I, I sorry, I use them until um, they're completely covered and I don't have a clean spot. And there. Doesn't take much at all, does it? So I hope you play around. Um, I did a couple of different designs. I like these flowers a lot. I did use a stencil on this one, and I traced it with a um, very faint line of graphite pencil. And then I put the crayon on top of it and then painted on top of that. And I really didn't care for this line showing up. 
So um, I didn't think that worked so well, but it's still a nice composition. I think maybe um, I want to play around with this kind of idea, maybe freehand drawing some of these things, or maybe using this pattern, draw my pattern on the card, on the um, copy paper first, and then tracing it out with my white crayon like I did for the other ones. Um, this is the one I did with the, uh, the um, circles, the geometric design. Again, lifting up some color. Some I left, some I picked up better than others. And this was just kind of fun to play with. So when you are done with your painting, you can take it off the board just by peeling the, pa the tape off. And I would peel it at a 45 degree angle. And see how it comes up so nicely? Now this one's still damp, so I'm not going to do it all the way off. But I wanted to show you that, yeah, 45 angle works really well. And um, I'll let this dry. I might go over it again and put some more color on. If you want, you can just reseal it there. So that's how I did that. And these are 5 by 7, so they will fit in a standard um, frame that is 5 by 7 opening or um, a mat opening that will accommodate a 5 by 7. They would also make nice postcards that you can send in the mail. You can put address and a stamp on the back and a little note and um, put those in the mail. They should be fine going through the mail. If they're a little warpy like this, you can turn them over and get the back damp and then press them with books for a couple of days and let them dry. Or I have also heard about people using an iron on them, but I would be very careful. Don't get too hot. This is paper and it would singe pretty easily, so just be careful with that. But um, they're a lot of fun. and. It's a way to be creative with just a few minimum dis, um, supplies. And if you have any questions or comment, comments or concerns, um, please get a hold of me. I'm at Hanover Township Senior Center, and you can reach me by email at lkay at hanover-township.org. And happy uh, art making and get creative today.